I want to become a merchant to the biggest food market in the Philippines and on Taste Test Tuesday, they test the food if it is worth it. The members of this co-working space will taste your food and if they like it, if they rate it high, then you're in. 450 people, but I only have 45. So I will cut it into bite-sized pieces and I hope what tastes good in the mouth becomes word of mouth. Calling for Anthony Pangilinan. Hi. Are you ready for a taste test? Today? Yes, I'm ready. I'm Anthony Pangilinan, and in this episode of The Boardroom, we speak to the person behind the largest food market in the Philippines, and we find out why its merchants and clients go back again and again, week after week, month after month, year after year. Inspired by the outdoor markets of Mercato Central in Florence, Italy, RJ Ledesma brought the festive and gastronomic experience to the Philippines by founding Mercato in 2010 with award-winning food blogger Anton Diaz. As a premier night weekend food market in the Philippines, Mercato serves as a business incubator for budding entrepreneurs who have unique and innovative food concepts that can thrive in the competitive industry. With one large market in Bonifacio City as its base, Mercato is home to any food lover on the lookout for delicious and diverse food choices in a chill and comfortable environment. Woo! Welcome, Anthony Pagilin. I've been a big, big fan ever since I was a little boy. Oh, come on! Same. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, you're up there right okay. now well, with thank, Mercato. Well, thanks so much for coming here. This is the kitchen where we conduct our Taste Test Tuesdays, where our potential vendors come over. They prepare about 50 samples for people, and the whole office from the third, fifth, and seventh floor come over here to try out. I know, I know, and I brought samples for five. Ah. <laughs> but thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for also joining us in the boardroom. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Okay, first off, why Mercato? Okay, very interesting story. When my wife and I went to our honeymoon in Florence, Italy, one of the first places we visited was the Mercato Central. And she was just blown away by, by the experience. It, it's not just, it's a total sensory experience. You get to try the food, you get to meet the owners, it's the smell, you know, it's the taste. Everything, she enjoyed it so much. And she told me, um, RJ, I hope we can bring home this Mercato Central experience back to the Philippines. And initially, when that happened, I initially balked, sabi ko, yeah, right, can we actually do that back in the Philippines? So that planted the seed in our mind for the name Mercato. Now, you mentioned earlier the idea of pain points. That's right, that's right. Again, this is another source of inspiration mm. for building the concept. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng pain points sa negosyo? Okay, ganito yan. No? Um, Dean Pax Lapid always says, yes. your biggest irritation can become your biggest inspiration. And when I would get sent abroad to places like uh, Thailand, Singapore, Taiwan, the first place that they would actually bring us to would be the food markets mm -hmm. abroad. That's where the tour organizers would bring us because you get to experience a bit of the local culture and, and the food and it's oh, a great joyful? experience. Wasn't that, that a joyful that, one? That was a joyful experience. So at the same time, I was very happy and frustrated at the same time. Oh, because why of what that? you experienced yes, here. I see, why, why, I'm saying okay. this is a great experience for the food. How come we aren't doing the same thing here in the Philippines? And all of a sudden, you start reading the economic signs. So this is why from the day market initially, mm -hmm. it expanded also to the, to, night, to the night market. market. Actually, we started off uh, with a day market, Mercato Central. It was really a, a, mor right, a morning right. market. And then uh, we were initially moved to a new site. And we said that, you know, as we move, we had to find ways to sort of pivot to see if we could grow the market. And at that time, the morning market was the hot thing to do. And uh, a night food market was a big risk. I could feel, I could feel my cojones all the way up to here <laughs> when we started the night, the night food market. In fact, we had a very difficult time convincing our morning vendors to try shifting to the night and food yet market. You shifted, and yet you pivoted. So, what is the key for a startup to pivot if it's not working or something can be better? I, I guess you have to just do it kind of fast. Read the signs as well. And, read you know, the signs. Read the signs and just do it. I mean, you can read eighty percent of the signs, mm -hmm. see where the trends are going, and say, let's do it. And when you get there, you pivot, you iterate, you fail fast, you fail forward. All the cliches are there. Okay, but, but let's get real. Huh? You just have to go there. Let's get real. The night before. Okay? Okay. You're about to set up your first market. Oh, man. Oh. The tent wasn't even set up. <laughs> That's right. So the first that I remember very clearly, I had a wedding hosting that night before the market opened up on a Sunday. And I came to the, I came to the venue and they were still hurriedly fixing up, putting up the tent and it wasn't finished. You know, took a shower, came back 6 a.m. And the place was packed. And the place amen, was packed. Amen. So, amen. So, I so was really start surprised. Up tips. Oh. Okay, because when you started this up, you're already a host. You're mm. already a business person. You had mm. various jobs. 
And a lot of people want to start up but they're already holding jobs. They have businesses already. So, come on, quick okay. tips. Okay, if, if it's a person who wants to start off a new business, let's mm -hmm. say outside of the job he's currently doing, then of course, you, you give up a lot of your slack time. I mean, there's no more downtime for you. Mm -hmm. So, when we actually did this business, what I often tell people who want to start off, because many of them actually were had, had jobs on the weekdays and then right. run the, uh, their, their, their food stalls on the weekend. And often, they keep on doing that until the point that they are making more money on the stall than they are making uh, with their regular job. So don't quit job. your job immediately. Don't quit the, for me, I mean, mine is be practical. Keep your day job right, until you right, finally right. you're able to make that move. But this one, particularly for food vendors, this is the advice I always give them. That nowadays, people don't just buy the food. They're buying the story behind the food, right? Mm. So people always talk about the idea of authenticity. That's what Seth Gordon talks about all the right. time. The authenticity behind the product. People want to hear the story because they just don't eat the food. Eh? Now, let's go to you. That story. Mm -hmm. So you talked about the pain points. Mm. Frustrated the night before. What was that one moment when you said, Whoo, this is working. Oh, yes! That, that Put one, it up. I, yes. I, I remember that one. I, I was standing in the middle of the market and I just saw the influx of people coming in and out of the market. I was going, oh my God. My God, we created this. And they just get together because of the great food. Okay, now you just wanted to initially provide opportunities for merchants. That's right. And that's then right. it became an entire market. Now it's like evolved into an incubator. That's right. That's business, right. an entire ecosystem. Give that's me something doing. quick there. How did that happen? How did okay, it basically we started seeing that people would come in to become food vendors. But eventually, we are seeing that many of them were testing food contests before they could graduate into the bigger leagues. So okay. you're okay to see people leave, huh? No, because they, we were, we're happy to see them graduate wow. and become bigger. But what we're realizing right now, what we're realizing right now, and building the ecosystem, is that there are some people, great concept, but they don't have the operational, financial capacity okay. to grow bigger. So we're saying, how can we help them get bigger and still have skin in the game when these guys get bigger? And that was really the impetus for us to build a uh, Mercato ecosystem, which I will tell you more about when we go to the boardroom. Sakto! Okay. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about not just the wedding of this guy, but the marriage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven years now. Seven years, no, right? I'm, I'm, Mercato, seven years. Yes. My wife, uh, we are nine years yeah. going forever. <laughs> going Ganun forever. Ganun dapat ang Mercato. Yes, that's so, right. So, tapos na ang seven-year itch. Are there still itches and glitches? Yeah. We'll find out when the boardroom returns. See you there. If you want to get into the food business, maybe you can get the services of people like RJ to be your expert consultant. And what kind of meals succeed in markets such as this? Well, you might want to get his advice too by trying a recipe at home. Try it at home, test it, and then maybe, just maybe, it might win best seller here in this market. Tulad dito. Panalo. Bro, from providing stalls mm -hmm. to building an ecosystem. Sounds good, no? Wow, sounds, sounds, <laughs> sounds difficult. <laughs> Obviously, your ways of work have changed through the years. Basically, I'm, and a lot of what I do right now is, you know, I've, I've had to rethink uh, the business models. And I think really the most key thing right now is really thinking how the models of business work because we have to evolve from becoming a food market right. or a food ecosystem. Right. Right. So it evolves um, how you recruit people, how you recruit uh, vendors to come mm. into the business. Uh, you have to develop also what do you really want to do? Uh, what do you really want to grow? Because you realize what you want to do is we really want to grow the number of vendors that we have and the number of venues which we can have here as well. So it means that do you do all the work in-house or do you outsource that so you can just focus on doing your business? Eh? But no? don't you need capital to bring in new people? Uh, well, that's why, that's why, like I said, no, it's some, well, of course there's capital for the business, but again, that's why we look at ecosystem and collaboration. You look mm, for okay. partners where it makes sense that you bring them in. I mean, uh, through, through working with uh, Gonegoso, you find a lot of good partners who are over there who, who actually want to to help out through working with the different franchise associations. You realize there are people there who want to help out. What is the change that has happened in RJ? What did it have to take for you to evolve the past years? I think it really took 
uh, several stepping backs and at the same time always realizing, and I think this is a big thing for many businessmen, is that you are not your business. If you fail, if you screw up, that's okay. Just move on very quickly because sometimes there's a tendency for us to attach our ego to our business when we realize, you know, it's kind of separate uh, both of those things. That's not the same thing. And sometimes you also have to learn over time that you have to wear your failure like it's a badge of honor. But you did mention the ability to pivot. That's right, that's so right. To change quickly. Can you give me some advice for those? And for me, who want to shift from a failure or this didn't work, agility, what's yes. the key? I think number one is uh, you have to learn to read things very, very quickly. To see, uh, to be on the ground on the market saying, okay, this didn't work, but what is the particular product that's, that's, really, that's really working over here? Then you move it towards in that direction. So it's, it's really, uh, you can't be stuck on an idea. You can't be in love with a specific idea. You have to be in love with how the business is moving right, right. and to be aware of that one. But you're not alone. A lot of people are organizing these markets now. Mm. I'm speaking to the mall owners from 20%. Only in the past years, it's now 40% food businesses inside the mall. That's right, that's right. So how's competition going okay, for you? Okay, great. So understand this one. What we are building in Mercato is if we are a food entrepreneurship incubator, is that they're not actually competition. What we want is for our vendors to graduate into becoming oh, mall tenants. So don't PhD na sila. Exactly, because that's what... <laughs> That's where you train them, but sometimes the malls, they have to look around. They look around also in these different food venues saying, which one there is good? Because of course, as a mall, you also want to make sure you've got continuous cash flow. What if you choose a vendor that you say, oh, this looks good, but six months down the road, he's not making money. Wouldn't you rather choose something that you knew has already been vetted previously? Right. And what better place than a food incubator market mm -hmm. uh, where, where you can vet them and for these vendors also to practice their, uh, that's their undergrad, diba? Right? That's where they're doing, where they also can spend low capex, low opex to check on their product development, menu engineering, menu development, uh, customer, sale, uh, customer skills, sales, finance, operations. Well, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes resources to build your own business. Mm -hmm. But you're not just building your own business, you're evolving your business and you're helping thousands of other businesses succeed too. I mean, which is which? No, I think, I think it works well. If other people make good, then I'm making good. And mm -hmm. that's how I really see it. That's why I'm passionate about what I do. I think the passion comes from the idea that, you know, you are also making money, but at the same time, you're also helping other people make money from what you've learned. Hi, Mom. Sir, let you see One word, Mom. Let's look at your merchants, yeah. okay? Thousands of people want to be part of Mercato okay. and other food stalls. Give me, give okay. me, Most what is the key to is that, succeed? What they do is, first of all, evaluate the market and understand what are you, what food can you be passionate and authentic about? Uh, what, what we often tell people is that a lot of the OFWs have a great chance of becoming really great vendors because they lived abroad for many years, they enjoy the cuisine mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. When they come back to live here, they can create cuisine that combines both the Filipino palate with those international right. tastes. At the same time, we're looking for more authentic stories from, from the region, from the regions, from the provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're looking for. We want, we're looking for people to come up with us with unique ideas, with innovative food ideas, and food with story, food with heritage. That's why I like the two vendors of uh, number one, Bak Minyonya, because it has a heritage story behind it. Right. You're not just eating the, these noodles, you're eating the story of a migrant woman who came over here whose recipe was given to her by her, by her ancestors and brought over here. I like the art of chill because they're saying, I really love halo halo, but what can I make it so it's something again that, that's still both uh, modern and fresh, but still appealing to me. Okay, but that's the energy that yeah. begins, no? The passion, but how do you end strong? How do you okay. sustain how, it? So first of all, um, they have to take a look, of course, at the, that their OPEX and their CAPEX, making sure that it's still low. Then, and if they don't understand these terms, they, they, then are they here to help? Exactly, that's where the Mercato, we have a Mercato Academy ecosystem, mm -hmm. where, where mm -hmm. we can help them out with that one at the same time. But once they understand all these different things, I think what needs to grow from them is the idea that it's a concept that is repeated and scalable. Mm -hmm. Can you do this halo halo again and again and again? Can you bring it to as many places as you can? Can you do the same thing with Bak Minyonya? Is it too complicated a process, diba? Right? So these are the things that you must consider. I mean, if that's your objective, right. if you want to graduate, if you want to scale the business, then that's how you must perceive it to be. So and from one to market to many other markets, to, to many from other Manila markets. to outside of Manila, what's the secret to scale? I think What's the secret to scale, scale is that you have to have executional excellence. You have to understand how, how the business works. Small, competent teams don't have too many cooks spoiling the broth. So if you have a very good team over there, just keep it that, that small. Then build another team again for mm -hmm. another new business. Build another team for another new business. You, as the manager, keeps an overall strategic view, which you should impart to them. At the same time, if you go outside of your comfort zone or comfort areas, let's say go provincial, go to the other areas, get people who understand uh, on the ground what the business is like there, what is the atmosphere for food, because it's very different 
working in Pampanga, working in Cagayan de Oro, working in Cebu. Get local players who yes, understand. Get, get local players who understand what's happening, but share your overall vision of what you want to do. are here in Mercato Central in BGC, Nike Food Market and Food Business Incubator by RJ. Apart from this, RJ has also introduced weekend markets in different parts of the Philippines, including Subic up north and Cagayan de Oro down south. All this with a production called The Next Big Food Entrepreneur for Startups. After this break, we talk to two food entrepreneurs who started and made it big here at Mercato Central. Oh, sana ulam natin. Hi, Donnie. <laughs> We've been talking to the co-founder and organizer of Mercato, but that's just one point of view. See, from the top, it is counterclockwise, but from below, it's clockwise. So let's talk now to the merchants of Mercato. Let's see their point of view. Today we have a new merchant and one who's there for the past number of years. Let's start with Cedric. Congratulations. Hi, thank you so much. And the <laughs> Yes, the name of the brand is called The Art of Chill. It is an artisanal halo halo frozen desserts brand. And then we have Gershwin. We have Bakni Nyonya. We have uh, Indonesian cuisine. We okay. have uh, Bakmi Goreng, Indonesian stir fry noodles. And then we have the beef rendang. So how has it been? You just started. That's right. Uh, it's uh, been a little tough, but uh, this is, um, we believe, a good product that the Filipinos would really love, you know, to put a new twist on a traditional classic. Okay, so you have this classic halo halo, but with a twist. But what convinced you that Mercato was the way to go? Well, Mercato is a place where the ground is equal for all the vendors there. So it doesn't matter if you've been there for just a couple of weeks or if you've been there for a couple of years already. People will come there looking for good food. That's all Filipinos do. Well, right? <laughs> what was your perspective? Because you, senior A couple of years already. So what convinced you Mercato was the right Well, actually, partner? we joined Mercato because of their contest. Uh, every year, they, they provide right, this right, right. entrepreneur with a, a chance to go to the market. And then they, they are given six months rent fee for a grand price. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't expect that we were going to win. But you did. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> this guy's inspiration is he loves halo halo. Uh -huh. But yours was your wife. So Chinese. how did that start again? Well, we started when we are cooking only with family and then from Bible studies and then friends. And then I asked my wife, why don't we start it in the market? And then people, I think, will love this one. And then he said, we are a little bit sketchy that time because when you say Indonesian food, it's so rarely served here in the Philippines. That's why... Uh, I said, let's go get the gamble already. Now let's go to RJ because eventually it ends with him. But yeah. this is about him. What have you learned working RJ, with RJ? Uh, RJ has given us the chance. And then from there, he teaches us how, how to promote our food and then uh, how to keep repeating customers coming back, coming back on you. So he gave you the break. Yeah. <laughs> that true. was just a break that you had to, of course, build yes, on true, your own. Yes, true. Right? Mm -mm. In your case, well, what was it about RJ? Right, RJ is uh, very open-minded, right? So when we applied to Mercato, they didn't ask me if I had any culinary degree. They didn't ask me what my formal uh, education was in terms of cooking. Which is the typical Be questions you ask. Right, right. and I, because I have none, I have zero. All they asked is, show us your product, show us what you've got, you know, give us a taste. And if it's good, if it's something that uh, the Filipinos will love, then we'll put you out there. Well, we hope that you will continue on. And all the best to the first four years. More years to come, bro. Thank you very okay. much. Thank Marami you very salaman. much. Again, both Gershwin and Cedric, merchants of Mercato. Let's go back to the guy behind Mercato. Let us hear more of his points of view. RJ, the present is packed in itself. What about the future? Okay, we're really looking towards making this, this ecosystem very vibrant. That, you know, when the future, when, you, when people think of Mercato, they're not just thinking of Mercato as the food market, but really thinking of Mercato as the place to be so that I can be able to grow, to become the next big Mang Inasal, the next big Jollibee. So, really what we're seeing is, is the growth of this ecosystem, and I think in the next couple of years, we're expecting more venues to open up. Okay, when all is said and done, bro, what ties it all together? I think it's really, it's really the passion. It's a, it's a, it's a passion uh, for life, 
passion for work, passion to give back, passion for excellence. I mean, that, that all ties, that ties for me everything together. I've heard several themes all throughout this interview from you. I saw family, and of course, even as friends. Mm, so right. how do you put this all together? Uh, well, well, I just, I just like to think that it's, it's not something that I put together consciously. Mm. It's that, you know, you pursue what you love best, and when you pursue that one, that's where you make, if you're happy with what, you, I, me I remember I, I heard Gary Vaynerchuk speak in the RISE conference, he said, family first. And the reason why I became an entrepreneur to do this one is family first. It follows, but you get a great kind of friends because you made your family first. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a great kind of business because you bought your family first. And people can feel that from you as well. Well, we don't just feel it, we see it with Vanessa around. Maraming salamat, RJ. All the best to your family, your business. And, and to your you. business as well. And Anthony, talking thank about you. business, we would like to invite all future food entrepreneurs who want to put up their next big food business to come and join Mercato Central. Check us out on Facebook. Uh, you can just PM us, send us a message, or email us at mercatocentralph at gmail.com. That's amazed my only plug. How you make an opportunity of every platform. <laughs> God bless you, bro. All God the bless, best. Man. God bless. <laughs> Thanks for the board, bro. <laughs>